Hello guys, it's Lix and welcome to my first tutorial on this channel. Today, I will be attempting to teach you guys how to paint digitally in the program Paint Tool Sci. And as a disclaimer, this is only one way to paint, so watch this video with an open mind as there are countless different ways of going about this. And lastly, I would like to add that you do need some prior knowledge of the program Paint Tool Sci and also drawing slash painting in general, so um, <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, having said all of that, let's get straight into the tutorial and we're gonna start with some basic concepts. So first thing I would like to go over is the tools that we'll need to um, make this digital painting happen. The main tool that we'll be focused on is the brush tool, and I have made two presets for the brush tool, brush 1 and brush 2. Brush 1 will mainly be used for sketching and details, while brush 2 is used for blocking and colors and painting. If you would like to see the brush settings for both of these brushes, I suggest that you go rewind the video and look to the right side where the red arrow is pointing at. But honestly, the only difference between these two brushes are the size, opacity, and blending, which will be changing quite a lot throughout the whole video. The next tool that I'll be introducing is the marker tool. It is also used for painting as well, but has a slightly different feel compared to the brush tool. The thing to remember about the marker tool is that it will look transparent if there is no opaque color underneath, so just keep that in mind when you're painting. And last but not least, we will be using the airbrush tool to add more color variety and also just softer shading in general. I almost forgot this, but there's actually one more tool that we might be using from time to time. It is called the watercolor tool and is used for blending. The main thing to remember about this tool is to always keep smoothing pressure on 100%. That way it is used solely for blending and nothing else. And that's about it for the tools portion. So next we'll be going through a basic demo of my painting process before moving on to the real thing. So step 1 is creating the sketch, and I'm using the brush 1 tool at a lower opacity but also higher minimum size for more unified brush strokes. Step 2 is fairly simple. Just take the magic wand tool, select outside of the sketch, invert the selection, and fill in your base colors. So after the base layer is created, step 3 is all about locking that layer and painting loosely with the airbrush tool, marker tool, and brush tool. And after you've introduced all the colors that you'll be using, step 4 is just merging the layers and refining and polishing until it's desirable. It's at step 4 where the line art layer really merges with the base layer, giving it that painting-esque look. And now we will proceed to the final demonstration which is a speed paint of me painting an anime style portrait. In the bottom left corner, I will have the current step that the painting is on. Please pay close attention to which tool I'm using and how I'm using it. But don't worry, I'll still be giving commentary and little tips regarding my painting process during the speed paint. Alright, so let's get started. Um, first, I'm going to be creating the sketch using the brush one tool very roughly. But do keep in mind that the neater your sketch is, the easier it will be later on for the actual painting process. So uh, yeah, it's really just up to preference, but I like to keep my sketch relatively clean. And also, just a small tip, but I would recommend that you actually don't rely on the stabilizer function too much during the sketching phase. By keeping the stabilizer low, your lines will be a lot more natural and rough, but also more precise. The stabilizer also lags your lines, which is what makes it work the way it does. So by not lagging your lines, you're actually drawing a lot faster and more efficiently. So here, we are actually nearing the end of the sketching process, and I'm about to block in my colors, which is done so by selecting everything outside of the sketch, then inverting the selection to bucket in the base color. Which then brings us to our next step, loosely painting on the base layer. It's very important that you remember to lock this layer so you won't color outside of it. When you're putting down your initial colors, I would highly recommend using the airbrush tool as it creates nice gradients and color variety without harsh lines. And the rest of the coloring for this step is just knowing where your light source is and how the plane changes of the form that you are drawing affects the value of the color that you're putting down. So in simpler terms, just know your soft shadows and your cast shadows and you should be good. Another tip I would like to mention is that when you're picking colors to paint with, try to pick colors outside of the base colors family. For example, I added hints of more reddish browns to her hair for a more visually appealing painting. Something else that you can do is to turn your painting into a grayscale and really observe the values of the painting. Are there too many lights, too many darks? If so, what can you do to adjust it so you can fix that? Those are questions that I like to ask myself. And would you look at that, we're actually at our last step which is just merging the layers to refine and polish the drawing. At this stage, I find it to be very important that you have two tools with different blending thresholds to switch between. It makes the drawing process much more streamlined and is honestly the best time saver when it comes to digital painting. And I'm not even talking about keyboard shortcuts, which will be in a later video, but not having the need to always adjust your brush settings really makes for much faster painting. 
I would suggest upping the density of brush 1 but keeping blending at 0 as your detail brush and using the marker tool with a high blending number as your general painting brush. But honestly, you have to remember that these brush settings are not set in stone. They have to be changed around all the time to achieve your desired effect. And also at the stage of painting, do remember to paint over your sketch and leave no harsh lines showing if you're really going for that painterly look. And don't forget the airbrush tool. It can still be very helpful to airbrush some colors onto parts of the drawing to make it look more unified and unique. And lastly, if there's one thing that you take away from this tutorial, I would want it to be experimentation. There's honestly going to be a lot of trial and error, but the more you experiment, the more likely you will find a way of painting that suits you. And that's about it. I know this wasn't much of an in-depth tutorial, but I did try my very best to cram as much relevant information as I could. If you like this type of video or found it to be helpful, please give me a thumbs up so I know that I'm doing something right. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, and good luck!